thankfully, uh, we've had a good turnout at church, good participation, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday night. And, um, but it's still hard for missionaries to get around. And so we began several months ago having Zoom sessions on Saturday night with the, the wonderful core of missionary couples that our church has. Um, I, I think that our church uh, supports some of the finest missionaries in the world. Uh, they're bright people, they love the Lord, uh, they're interested in uh, real conversions, they preach the gospel, uh, they minister to people where they are, as they are, with the truth that sets men free. And uh, the missionary that we are going to be speaking with this evening is an old classmate of mine, um, yes. long, long ago, but not very far away from where I am. Uh, Brother Gary Matheny and I were students in Bible college together. And uh, so I wanna introduce him to you. A number of our people are fairly new and have not met him personally. So we'll, we'll spend this evening getting to know uh, him and his ministry and some exciting things that God is uh, is doing in his life. So without any further ado, let me welcome Brother Gary Matheny uh, to the camera. And uh, there he is uh, right next to me. He takes his glasses off so that he can look young, but actually he's <laughs> almost the same age as I am. And You're older. You're really old. I am. I was born in 50. What year were you born in? Never mind. <laughs> 1950 also 1950 also yeah. anyway he's got the sweetest wife in the world and, and she so wonderfully compliments him I just love uh, Brother Matheny and, and his wife I love to see them in the room together where he's doing things certain things and she's always moving around in the background complimenting yeah. almost everything that he says and does in a wonderful way. She's a brilliant gal and uh, a tremendous, tremendous uh, help to his uh, life and ministry. And so I appreciate her. Uh, my wife and I, one of the most delightful times that we have ever had in our life was when we went on a one month mission trip and saw four different missionaries. And we spent a week uh, with Brother Matheny and his wife in Romania. What an absolutely beautiful country. Uh, had I a little bit more patience, excuse me, had I a little bit more patience, I would have uh, been willing to stand in line to see Count Dracula's place, but I wasn't, I wasn't patient enough for that. Um, ever since my brief stint in the military, I don't like to stand in line for anything. So brother, brother Matheny, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, why don't you give us a thumbnail sketch of um, uh, where Gary Matheny was born and how he grew up and how he ended up in Bible college? Well, uh, as I said, 1950, Stockton, California is my birthplace. And uh, I was in Manteca, California for up until the beginning of third grade. And from third grade to high school, it's in South Lake Tahoe High School. Beautiful place. I lived in the Sierra Nevada Mountains, then went to Washington State. My folks moved up there. I went into the Navy uh, at, at Washington State to please my dad. It wasn't something I wanted to do, but uh, I'd made him upset because I wrecked a brand new car. And so I thought, well, I'll make him happy. I went into the Navy, which is a bang of Bible, you know, not joining the Navy, but honor your father and mother and that was his wishes, so I did. And then I became a diver in the Navy because my dad liked watching Lloyd Bridges and Sea Hunt. And I thought he'd be proud of me, and he was, and I was happy. And anyhow, I got saved in the Navy. I was raised in a church and never even used the word saved, never even talked about such things. It was tradition and rituals and uh, a nice place to go, but if there's no salvation, what's the point? And in the Navy, people witnessed to me and I couldn't understand why they were doing this. And then I said, I can, I'm going to get a Bible and figure this out myself. <laughs> and I read the Bible for about a year and a half. And I, I came to saving faith. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. And I decided, well, if this is true, and, I, and at that point I believed it was true. And I thought, well, then I'd be a fool not to ask Christ to be my Savior. So in a Navy barracks, I called upon Christ and I told him, yes, Lord, I believe in you, not just believe he existed, but I trusted him at that moment for heaven. 
anyhow, so that was my salvation. I, I, I praise him and that he's led me and, and he used a simple principle, honor your father and mother that it may be well with thee. And things turned around in my life by doing that. And your parents don't have to be perfect because there are no perfect parents. It just says honor them and things will go well with thee. So I did that. And that was a good principle for me to follow. So tell us about uh, that one mission that you were on that you wrote a book about, which is yes. so, uh, such a, you, you are, first of all, you're a good writer. You've written a number of books. Every book that you've written, I've read. And, and Thank your, you. your writing style is captivating uh, and interesting and difficult to put down. But uh, of particular interest right now is the book that you wrote about your experiences in the Navy. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Thank you, Dr. John. Uh, yes. Um, I surrendered to serve the Lord in Siberia. I was on the sub. I had, there was a, a Christian on there. It was a really good Christian. He had his dreams, things he was hoping to accomplish, but his greatest, he was, he wanted to please God more than have his dreams, which I was a little bit the other way around. <laughs> I just want God to bless my plans. And, and, and he explained a lot to me and I wanted to make the dive in Siberia. I knew the sub was a, a black ops sub. I knew they were doing secret stuff. I didn't know what it was, turned out to be top secret. I told later, I don't know how true this is, but I put in for experimental diving unit the Navy had because I had the saturation diver. We're making week long dives, two or three hours in the water a day, breathing helium and oxygen. Anyhow, uh, I ended up on the sub and I was told later, well, the reason you ended up here is because you didn't ask to be put into it. And that anybody who asked to be put there was rejected because they thought if they were ever infiltrated, it would be by somebody who wanted to be on the boat. How true that part is, I don't know, but we were we were doing top secret work in Siberia and we were tapping a Russian military cable. It's all been declassified. I called the CIA, I got it in writing and I have several releases that they put out through their Freedom of Information Act. Anyway, there was 21 divers and they told us a year in advance, only eight of you are getting in the water. Well, we were jockeying for position. I mean, uh, I pray, I said, God, I was a new Christian. I got saved just before I got on the sub. I said, God, please let me make this dive. And I always felt like God was saying, I mean, I never heard him voices, but I always felt like God was impressing. What if I don't let you? I said, oh, God, this is really important. To me. <laughs> I said, God, I will live a better life for you if you let me make this dive. And if I don't let you. And then I came back. This is like a few days, sometimes weeks between. And I pray again. I said, Lord, I will give you my life. It shows you how big it was an idol to me. It wasn't a bad thing, but it became bad only in the sense that <clears throat> I loved it more than God's will. And I said, God, I will give you my life and I will serve you if you let me make this dive. <clears throat> and then I felt like God was saying, and if I don't let you, will you still serve me? <laughs> Lord, please don't make this dive. And finally, the Lord got me to the place where I said, Lord, I will serve you. I had to think about this because it can't be words. God knows our hearts. And I, it was a weak commitment, actually. But I said, and I meant it, Lord, I will serve you if you don't let me make this dive. But I really want to make this dive. Anyway, the next day, the officer walks up to me. It's 400 feet under the waves. Our, our sub was parked on the sea floor then. and had giant skids they could sit on. He said, you're making the first sat dive. And turned around and walked away. And it was seven days three days at depth, four days of decompression. They pumped us hot water to keep us alive. I got three water entries during that, or two water. There were three water entries, but I made two of them, the first and the last. And uh, interesting stuff, interesting things happen, almost unbelievable things. Trying to make it into a movie, which is mostly filmed, about 75%. We'll see how it goes from there, but it's been fun. And I just thank the Lord for that experience because a lot of spiritual things were there. So. Well, it's been a lot of years have transpired before you were allowed to tell that part of your story. Yes, yes. And that's a, that's wonderful. Yes, that's wonderful. I'm I'm excited to hear that. Now, why don't you relate to us? Uh, I'm kind of working backwards here. Sure. We're working on this movie. What books have you written? 
Well, I wrote a quest series, a shriam, the quest for the great stones of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah took great stones and he buried them in Egypt and everybody in Bible college. So I had talked to people. And, oh, that's just big rocks, Brother Gary. There's boulders. I said, no, they're not. They're in one hand. They can't be big. It's not a figure of speech. He actually buried them. And there are several reasons just from the text that, that make it plain. And I, we ended up finding them and holding them. I didn't dig them up. The person who, who looked for them couldn't find them. And ironically, he finds them years later and doesn't realize he had the wrong town to begin with. Another whole story. Where's the Red Sea crossing? Quest for that. Where's Mount Sinai? The quest for that. And I did a lot of study on that. I have a, a book that I, I, people, so many questions. There's a book, I, 200 things the Bible talks about. It's for sale on Amazon, or you can go to my site and it's free. And I have all these books for free, actually, except for the submarine one. That's the only one I, that's only for sale. All of them are for sale, but you can read them for free if you go to a site called True Christian Short Stories. So it's, it, they're true stories. There's a couple of them that are fiction now because the site's grown and uh, there's books on there. So they're not all short stories. And there's some videos, but it's a, it's a library that somebody might want to check into and read up some stuff. And if you have time and if you like that, then it's free. And so I hope you avail yourself. True Christian Short Stories by G.M. Matheny. And, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, I bought a book by a guy named Gary Matheny. And I thought maybe this is one of those books that, that, that <laughs> my friend has written and I don't know about. So I bought it. And it's about the life of a bullet. Um, no, uh, a, a, a full metal jacket bullet and from the time it was mined until the time it was shot and it was it was gary Matheny, but not you <laughs> oh well, i don't know so, that no. well mine yeah. g-a-r-r-y two r's yeah. but might yeah. have been a difference there in the spelling anyhow i said way to reach people use whatever you can to be a light for the lord and uh god can use you so after communism fell and the Soviet Union started unraveling, um, you surrendered to be a missionary and uh, hit the road to raise support to go to Romania. So yes. tell us about that and your ministry uh, to Romania, because you've had a, quite an effective ministry uh, also to Roma people. Yes. Um, I graduated, you know, same year we were in school together and at PC. And I went up and I was associate pastor. And you know Pastor Nolan, still my pastor today, also a classmate. And I was there for six years helping him. And then after that, he, he, I said, you know, God's called me to do this and start a work. So he supported me, got behind it. And I pastored for five and a half years in the state of Washington, got his church started and bought a grange. It had been used as a church building. And we paid cash for it and stayed to the new pastor come on I thought man I've got this figured out and the church was even self-supporting in one year and I was so proud of that I went to Romania and uh it was 16 years for our first church was self-supporting I wasn't discouraged by it but I had expected faster growth you know yeah. and uh every place isn't the same Jesus went to Nazareth and the Bible says he couldn't do any mighty works there he did mighty works in many places of course we read about it in the Bible but not in his own hometown and it gives a reason because of their lack of faith every place isn't the same the Romanians themselves are kind hospitable people they've loved us I, I was you know I was concerned. They come out of communism. I thought, well, I'm an American. They won't like me. You know what they told me? He said, I've had him tell me the more we hated communism, the more we love the American people. Because <laughs> we were told America was the great enemy of communism and we hated communism. So you won't sell anybody in Romania on communism. They still hate it. So anyway, um, started there. Uh, three three of the churches we started are now self-supporting and have their own buildings paid for. And um, I'm hoping to go back. We'll see. I, I thought this about two years ago. I thought I'm going to go back. Maybe it's a year and a half ago. I'll look around. I tell my wife, and if everything's the way it should be, I'll resign as a missionary. And uh, I, I have things I'm doing. I'm not looking to retire. And I figure I'll do less as I grow older, but I enjoy doing things. Yeah hopefully accomplishing things. 
but there was a need to stay there, a, a real need. And I think things are straightened out. And, you know, Jesus said that you might have work, uh, fruit and that your fruit might remain. You see people come someplace, don't do much. You see people come someplace, they do something, they leave, and in a short time, it's gone. And you see some people go someplace, they do something, and it stays. And I want, I want it to remain. So we'll be going back. And if everything is as good as I humanly speaking can discern, I'll just leave it in the Lord's hand, like Paul left some of the churches he did, you know. And if not, then praise the Lord. We get to stay more, that's all. But um, that's where we're at right now. There's two more works, too, that we started that I don't expect them really to get off the ground, but they're, they're lighthouses. And one of the churches we started, pastored by uh, uh, a young man who graduated, Ramos is his name. He's Roma from uh, one of uh, our Bible Institute. Now he has the Bible Institute, about 10 students. Maybe it's eight now. But, uh, and he went and started a church on his own. I didn't have anything to do with it. And they started their own church. In fact, they had five people baptized there about a month ago. And uh, so it's exciting to see seeds planted, watered, prayed for, and then things coming from it, you know. As, so I'm not just interested in biding my time. If someone asks, why did you become a missionary? I suppose a lot of reasons that it was God's will. But um, uh, it's an adventure for me, you know. And I like that pioneering spirit. Yeah. So I'm thankful for that. And we get to heaven, the churches that support us, as yours, as others, will have fruit that will abound to their account, you know. Well, one of the one of the things that I thought was uh, profoundly insightful, but not obvious, was the fact that you uh, basically finished off your growing up years in a ski resort area. Yes, in Lake Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe. Yes, and so I, I thought it was incredibly wise of you um, that when you went to Romania, you located in that kind of town yeah. because you had an appreciation yeah. for the social dynamic of that yes. kind of community. And, I, and, uh, yeah. and God has blessed you. Yeah, and it wasn't by plan, though. It was the Lord. I, I <laughs> I only know of two towns in Romania. I have no ancestry there. My wife has no ancestry there. We didn't even take a survey trip. I got on a plane with my wife, 21 pieces of luggage, six small children, ages 11 years old down to six weeks. And we took a plane and we got to Lisbon, Spain, and we took a train from there to Romania and uh, should have had my head examined, I guess. And I was going to go to either Bucharest, the capital, or a town called Ploiesh, because they had a lot of oil there. And I thought, well, there'll be money there, and there'll be people we can get into church, and they'll help start more churches through missions. That was the big plan. I didn't know under communism, it doesn't matter where the oil and the gold and the resources are. Is that, is that second town you named? Is that where the big World War II raid took place? Yes, it is. It, it is. a world. It was, yeah. They We lost 57 planes there in one day. There were B-17s in, I think, 19. 1943 they went down there yeah that was uh that was uh it was a goof up <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they they took the wrong turn and ended up in bucharest and alerted the wolf waffle and i sent up like 300 planes after him and anyway yeah but we're there we're accepted and the let i <laughs> I did learn the Romanian language. I read the, I was reading it today, the Romanian Bible. I, I do all my preaching and teaching in it. I, I, the only class I flunked in high school was Spanish. That's supposed to be the easiest language to learn. That's because of an attitude problem that my teacher had. But anyway, uh, no, I, uh, I learned that language because I knew it's the heart language. I didn't want to end my life talking through an interpreter kind of, it's just, you, you have liberty, but not as much. And I wanted to speak directly to the people. And and so a lot of work, a lot of study, but it came along. And that's, a, I think, and Latin, you know, it's Romanian is not a Slavic language. It's a Latin language. So it's, it's easier for us to learn be, knowing English. Now, also did not learning Romanian, which is, I think, the closest living language to Latin, 
it really helped you in the study and the research for the writing of, of some of your books. Is that not the case? I think it did. I think it did. You know, uh, it's supposed to be half Italian. I, in fact, that's where the name Romania came from. The Romanian Empire conquered them about 2,000 years ago. And the Roman people intermarried with the Dacia people, which are from that area of Romania, and that be they became the Romanians with a, a Romance or Romanian language. So that all comes from the Roman Empire in that sense. Uh, as to me, it sounds similar to Spanish more, but that's another Latin language. And one out of four words, the first time I see them, I recognize them immediately. Uh, pronounced different. Spelling, they have a few other letters we don't have. And it's, it's a different language for sure. But um, if I was learning a tonal language or the Hungarian language, I understand it's very hard. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'd still be learning it, but at least I can converse and do everything I need to do in, in the language there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. That's great. So um, is there anything about um, your ministry that you think I'm not aware of? Because I, I found out about your, your, the movie that you are producing. Um, you're putting your book into a movie. The book is a great book. It, it's the kind of book that any Christian would want to give to a veteran, particularly yeah. a veteran, um, yeah. because the, the, the veteran would immediately be captivated by it, would find interest in it. And um, especially of that era, um, the but, but right. younger guys as well, younger guys as well. And so uh, is, there, is there anything else going on that, that, and is there anything of particular need that you have that we can uh, prayerfully consider? Um, Thank you for asking. I this movie, I, uh, it's inexpensive compared to Hollywood stuff. And I think I have all the money I need to put it together. I believe I do. The only question mark in my mind is the marketing Basically, the people I've talked to, there usually is always money involved in that too, but it depends on the quality. And there are people that I personally believe will help if the quality is what it should be. Okay. And we're not, I, we rented a submarine even. Can you believe that? A, 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 it wasn't a nuclear sub, but it was made during the same time as my sub. My sub was a nuclear. But uh, you know, we had three cinema. I'm hiring cinematographers. I'm not using some home camera to make this. We're trying to make it right. Uh, they are church non-professional actors, but there's a lot of people in there. You know, I'm a firm believer in prayer. And there are people that will pray until something happens, you know. And there's some people that caught, I mean, they're all donating their time. They want it to go. Um, so... It encourages my wife and I, my wife, listen, <laughs> my wife has always been on board for missions. And some of the books I wrote, and it costs money to be involved in the research. It, she has been there more because she knew her God-given calling was to encourage me. But on, on planning churches, she was gung-ho. And on this, she's every bit as gung-ho which was really helpful because you know we could be spending money on the house or something but she is she says let's do this i mean she's right there and that has been a big help and an encouragement pray pray that we finish it's 75 percent film my estimation it hasn't all been edited yet there's been some rough cuts uh and it's being edited have to color grade it and all those other kind of things um most of which, which are over my head, but pray that we can get it finished. I have to finish it up. I, I, I want to do it by the end of spring. I want to be back in Romania and pray that uh, we'll get some people that'll see the Lord's in it and open some doors for us to, to get it out there. The movie industry, I mean, right now, cinemas aren't doing much of anything with COVID as far as I can see, but there's uh, DVDs, there's live, there's 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 Christian places that take books and things, okay? Nonprofit organization, so all and the money has to go to other nonprofit places, which is my desire. And so anyway, it's another way I was like I was talking to you before we came on. What percentage of people read books? 
We all, you and I in the ministry, we study. And some people read for pleasure. I have, I don't think I've ever read for pleasure. <laughs> I read because it's not, I'm interested in the study, but not to pick up a book and listen. No, everyone watches TV or a movie. I mean, 99% of the people. And maybe I'm guessing, but maybe 15% of people or less read for pleasure. So it's a great open opportunity to reach people. Why should Hollywood have all that? And, you know, we can put God's ways up front. So it's another door. God gave me one. I'm 70. Um, still preaching. Um, yeah. These sort of things. So anyway, and the books are there. Hopefully more people. But like the movie, we'll read the book. I have another, the Layman's Biblical Handbook. That was the name of that book I started to talk about. 200 things the Bible says. Anyway, for free, you can buy it also, but it's for free if you read um, true, Christian short, true Christian short stories on, on the internet. So I'm kind of repeating myself here, but it's, uh, you know, you want to do things. I hope people listening want to do things for the Lord. I mean, Sir or ma'am, who's ever listening out there, uh, you know, this is a very short life. And uh, we have a chance to shine for Jesus. Most people think they're going to act like they're living forever, and they're not. Yeah. They got no more promise of tomorrow than you or I. And we all know we got an appointment with death. That's not morbid. That's reality. You just have held a funeral yesterday, I think. Today, I want yes. to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I, I want to spend my time. Um, God has in my life, since I've served him, he's basically always given me the time, the opportunity, the wherewithal to do what he's wanted. And sometimes I feel like I force things and sometimes, a very few times, but a few times where I feel like maybe I was dragging my feet. God forgive me, but I I love the ministry, and I get a certain enjoyment out of, I think most people will, doing a job, and hopefully a good job, you know, uh, that's, hey, we're going to stand before the Lord, so what what is the idea, you, 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 retirement, I mean, I'm going to do less as I grow older, simply if for no other reason, I can't do what I used to do. But sitting in front of a TV until I die is not an, my idea of fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, brother, let, let me just say on behalf of the congregation, um, our congregation really loves you. Thank you. Uh, and, and, and we love we your love wife. We, uh, we consider it a, a privilege to support and pray for you. Thank you. Um, it was... It was uh, part of the experience of a lifetime for my wife and me to spend that week with you guys in Romania. We had fun with you guys. Uh, it was, it was an absolute blast. And, I'm glad uh, you enjoyed it. and, and I am, I'm excited because I, I think that you are probably experiencing what I'm experiencing at this stage of our life. I actually 20, 30 years ago, I expected things to slow down, but they're actually speeding up. <laughs> well, they are for me, sir. Right now, yeah. I can definitely say yes, they are. Yeah. And Praise I'm, the Lord. I, he's, and like, brother, he's still letting, excuse me, he's still giving us things to do. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm finding the ministry now, uh, I, like you, I'm finding the ministry more exciting now yes. uh, than it has ever been. And I, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord for that. And uh, I appreciate uh I appreciate uh, how God works in people's lives. And, and I want you to know, um, as a pastor, I, I, I count it uh, among the greatest privileges um, to, to lead a congregation in supporting faithful missionaries like you. Uh, it's a privilege. Uh, we, not only do we love you, but we like you. <laughs> And, and we enjoy um, the thing that I, one of the things I like about, I will like about heaven uh, more than I like about earth is, is many of the people that I love are at such a distance from me that I can't hang with them like I want to. Yeah. And that's probably yeah. a good thing because if I did, I wouldn't get anything done. <laughs> um, and, um, 
And we got so, all eternity, uh, all eternity up there. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, it'll be great. So uh, do, do us a favor. Um, your wife is, is there. Um, let her know how much we love her and, and let your kids know Thank you. That, that we very, very much appreciate their willingness um, to have, uh, to be MKs um, and to have a mom and a dad who serve God uh, because uh, kids in the ministry, they don't get as much of their parents as other kids get of their parents. Uh, but, but the reason for it um, it is is to glorify God and to exalt the Savior, and uh, when our kids when our kids get behind us and and support us and pray for us and demonstrate uh, their desire for God to use mom and for God to use dad, that just uh, that's that's a wonderful thing. That's just a Amen. wonderful. Thing. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you, thank you for those. That's a good thing to pass on, and to my grandkids, yeah. Thank, Thank you, man. And uh, I hope you don't mind if I share this link with other pastors and, oh, and congregations uh, that maybe will um, bring them into contact with a with a missionary uh, that they will pray for, possibly support, at least be encouraged by. Okay. Man, thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it so much. Lord bless thank you. Have a great evening, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Have fun. Thanks, brother John.